I think that we often forget to be grateful as climbers. We're always focused on what's next. What's the next grade that we can climb? When's the next time we can get out to the crag? Once we send a project, what's next? And we forget to take the time to be grateful for the here and the now. I was thinking about this today because last year on Thanksgiving, I was in the Red River Gorge with Andy and Jed and I was climbing a route I was super stoked on called Breakfast Burrito. And all I wanted at that time was to send this route, to send Breakfast Burrito. And I didn't. I was a little bit frustrated by that, but now looking back, I am so grateful for that experience. It was so much fun and it taught me so much about myself as a climber and as a person. It honestly taught me that I don't really need to necessarily always send climbs as long as I learn something from them. I remember when I first started climbing, thinking that people that could climb V5, 511, the grades that I'm currently climbing now, were like these insane climbers. And if only I could get to those grades, I would feel completely satisfied and content with my progress. And I would have no cares in the world. Uh, that, that would be the ultimate climbing experience. And I hate to tell you this, but no matter what grade, no matter what route, no matter what accomplishment you happen to achieve, it is just ingrained in humans to always want more. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be a go-getter, with having goals that are lofty, dreams that are big, but at the end of the day, it is so, so, so important for you to look around and realize, A, the things that you've already accomplished in climbing, and B, the things that right now you're currently going through that in the future you will look back and say, wow, I am so grateful that those experiences happened. Even if you're brand new to the sport of climbing, I guarantee there's at least one person in the climbing community that's made your day a little bit brighter. Or maybe you've made their day a little bit brighter without even realizing it. And that's something to be grateful for. Think about all the time and energy and effort the setters have put into setting things at your gym. And then you get to go and play around on colorful plastic rocks as like a fun activity to do. That is something that we really, really should be grateful for. If you climb outdoors, think about all the places that you've been that no one else really goes if you climb. Like, why would you go to these cliff faces in the middle of nowhere uh, if you weren't a climber? That is something to be so incredibly grateful for. It's really funny because sometimes we just like forget to be grateful. Like, come on, dude. So how can we practice gratitude as climbers? I think one thing we can do is look back on our previous climbing experiences and pick out all the things that have made us better people and climbers today. I know for me that specific climbing experiences or trips that I've been on, that specific routes that I've climbed where I've learned something about myself or about the others around me. I know that that is the people that I've gotten the chance to experience these awesome events with. Number two, I think that we can actively cultivate an attitude of gratitude, oh, that rhymes, by taking the time to write down what we're grateful for right now. So for an entire year in high school, I actually had this jar and every day I would write down like two or three little things on slips of paper and I would date them and then I would put them in the jar. And at the end of the year, I dumped the jar out on my bed and I had so many things to be grateful for. And so if you're a person that maybe naturally is a little bit more pessimistic or has a hard time like finding the joy in climbing, finding the things to be grateful for in climbing, maybe try it. Uh, get yourself a jar, get yourself some paper, and every day just uh, write down even one thing that went well with your climbing today. You'll be surprised when you look back at the end of the year and see just how many things went right. Number three in cultivating gratitude in climbing is pretend like you were talking to yourself as if you were talking to a friend. If a friend was telling you about a climb they were trying to send and they were having a very frustrating time on it, you wouldn't necessarily want to point out all the bad things that that friend is doing. You wouldn't tell them, yeah, you're right, it's super difficult, like you're probably never going to get it. You wouldn't tell them like, 
oh, well, think about all the other crimes that you failed and how you used to be way better in the past or uh, your friends are way better than you at climbing. You wouldn't tell them, yeah, it sucks that you're always working, that you can never get out to climb. No, your friend would be like, this sucks. I don't want to be around this person anymore. And the same goes for you. By telling yourself all the bad things that's happening and like not focusing on what you should be grateful for, you're just like not a fun person to be around. And when you're not a fun person to be around, but like you have to be around yourself, that's a little awkward. It's super funny because our brains are just like wired to forget to be grateful. And it's just this habit you have to keep practicing over and over and over. It, the thing about it is it's not like one day it just suddenly clicks and now I'm a grateful person. Like you cannot stop. You have to keep going. There are always things to be grateful for in climbing. And even if you're not the best climber in the world, you can always show up with the best attitude and the best effort. And gratitude is a huge part of that. This whole video was inspired by the fact that today I've been feeling pretty bummed that we're not going on a big cool climbing trip like we did last Thanksgiving. And now I realize that instead of being bummed about it, I should be grateful that it happened at all. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay hyped.